Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session of the Hammond Symposium on Medical Robotics. Um, today, we're going to hear from Professor Joseph Wang, Micromotors Go In Vivo from Test Tubes to Live Animals. I'm Dan Elson, and this is um, the final one of these um, of these seminars. I'm I'm presenting um, Joe on behalf of Ferdinando Rodriguez Ibiena, who's taking a well-deserved rest today. Joseph Wang is Distinguished Professor, SAIC Endowed Chair, and former Chair of the Department of Nanoengineering at the University of California, San Diego. He's also Director of the UCSD Center of Wearable Sensors and Co-Director of the UCSD Center of Mobile Health Systems and Applications. He was Prior to that, um, Director of the Center for of Bioelectronics and Biosensors of Arizona State University. He's published more than 1,000 papers, 11 books, and holds 30 patents with an H index of 178 and greater than 130,000 citations. He's won numerous awards, and although today he will be talking about micromotors um, go in vivo from test tubes to live animals, um, he has other scientific interests concentrated in the areas of bioelectronics, wearable devices, biosensors, nanomachines, micro robotics, flexible materials, bio nanotechnology, and electroanalytical chemistry. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, Joe. I'd like to ask our audience members to please use the Q&A box to enter any questions that you have. You can write them in as we go through the presentation, and I'll put as many of them as I can to Joe at the end of the talk. With that, I'd like to hand over to, to Professor Joseph Wang. Thank you, Dan. Let me share my screen here. Let's see which present. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's good to be back in London. I've been coming to this symposium in person for many years, over a decade, and hopefully we come back next week, next year for the 22 session. So I'm coming from uh, San Diego in beautiful uh, California, in the campus in La Hoya, and we'll talk about our journey uh, moving from the bench, from the test tube, all the way to complex live animal studies of Micro robot. This is my 2013 book on nano machines. So I've been in this uh, business for almost two decades. We started in 2005 with a platinum gold nano wire swimming in peroxide, and we focus on a chemically power motor, but also acoustic and magnetic. And again, you saw a lot of wonderful talk about a variety of new actuation from light to electrical, again, acoustic, a lot of activity on magnetic from uh, Germany or Switzerland, and uh, some rocket business from uh, Dresden, Germany. So this is uh, the actuation and the different design and different movement principle. And uh, there are a lot of new capability uh, over this year, uh, uh, not only in terms of propulsion, uh, more power and speed and motion control, but also the ability to pick a cargo, transport a cargo, to add more multifunctionality like a Swiss, a Swiss knife, uh, to have intelligent, uh, like collective swarming behavior, and overall operation in complex biological uh, fluids. So this capability now offers us a diverse biomedical uh, application that we will cover today. And again, this journey came from the vision of the fantastic uh, voyage. I was young kids in 1966, and uh, this movie with a, uh, a milli machine going shrink into the blood with a medical crew to save life. But uh, 50 years later, we, as you can see in the BBC from London, we we published this first paper in live animals. So we realized the fiction, the science fiction of Hollywood by uh, introducing our this uh, zinc motor that swim in the stomach that we will discuss today. So. This is a long journey and this is still ongoing journey. And uh, many of this is summarized in this uh, nice review that to me and Professor Zeng wrote in uh, 2017, 
talking about uh, the, not only different actuation, but the different possible biomedical application. We all talk about drug delivery, but there are also surgery using gripper, using sensing with functional receptor, functionalized motor, or detoxification using membrane coated uh, uh, robots. So these are the type of application using variety of uh, micromotor and propulsion modes. Now, these are great opportunity, but they are facing major challenges. Just swimming in the blood environment is uh, the initial challenge, how to swim without passivation or biofouling to protect this uh, robot uh, for uh, prolonged swimming. And again, how to make a variety of complex tasks, not only to release the cargo, but do surgery, do imaging, eventually to disappear. So issue of safety, biocompatibility, immune response. And again, how to reach different parts of the body, different how to reach location is a barrier like the brain blood barrier, how to follow and track this motor and also how to, manufacture them in a high scalability. So you want to address all these challenges for a routine future application. And this is what we will show you a few steps, the first steps to address these challenges. And we are focused a lot in the GI delivery, GI track. We use oral administration of the drugs. And the goal is to have directed the uh, targeted delivery to specific site in the stomach and the GI, later on to different location in the body. So this is one advantage. And then also the movement itself give you dynamic active transport compared to normal pills that you take, which are all based on passive delivery. So you have improved retention, improved penetration to improve the bioavailability. And again, with the motor, you can reach a different previously inaccessible body locations. So again, they started the journey of drug delivery in 2008, 13 years ago, where we showed this is peroxide platinum nanowire that you can see that is in a channel picking a cargo transporting the cargo in a narrow micro channel and can navigate with the cargo. So this was again, 13 years ago, these are narrow channels, so picking, transporting, but the basic concept of directional transport, these are particle with a PLGA with drug. And this is the first part. Again, this was using nanowire. This nanowire are not good for a biological media where you have a lot of salt. They're good in low salt environment. So we and the group of Oliver Schmidt introduced about 2008, this micro rocket that can now have bubble propulsion. This bubble propulsion can overcome <laughs> the viscosity and the salt issue that the nanowire have. Uh, you have still, uh, this was still with hydrogen peroxide that uh, decompose give you oxygen bubble. They swim very efficiently. They have a lot of power. I can put a receptor in the outer coating. Uh, you can pick a cargo with a lot of force towing. Well, again, so you can functionalize them. They can swim efficiently in uh, this biological fluid. So the way we make it is not like a, a Schmidt. Uh, we are using teplet ele electro deposition where we have a, a polycarbonate membrane with a conical uh, pores that we first deposit the outer poly, uh, polyaniline or a polypyrrole layer and then the inner catalytic platinum. So this is a bilayer you can make a, thousand of these in a single membrane template. You dissolve the membrane, you release them. And when you place them in peroxide, they swim beautifully. You can see the bubble propulsion, extremely fast uh, uh, speed of uh, even thousand uh, body lengths per second. So if these are two micrometer long, we're talking about two millimeter per second. It's amazing. Uh, a speed and uh, reflecting the amazing power. So you can see this and you can guide it magnetically. You have a nickel layer or 
iron oxide layer. And this is uh, slow motion, but in principle, they swim in uh, over a thousand body lengths per second, as you can see here. Now they swim, uh, swim slow, slower in uh, biological fluid, but they can still swim freely in uh, undiluted serum, as you can see here, or the next video. So they are moving here in undiluted uh, serum, and uh, this is good enough. You functionalize them with the receptor or with the cargo. Now we are focusing a lot in the GI tract, as I mentioned, because with oral delivery, you only have a passive uh, payload uh, absorption, limited bioavailability uh, by uh, uh, transport to the blood. So with uh, the active delivery, we have very good retention, the mucosa layer, these are, you'll see magnesium based motor that are decorated with the payload and they can really enhance the retention and tissue penetration and overall improve the uh, cargo delivery in the stomach or in the lower GI. Uh, Cause a lot of diseases uh, and also a different application uh, for drug delivery transport to the bloodstream. So this requires replacement of the external fuel and to use in situ fuel. So we cannot obviously use a 2% peroxide. So we have to get rid of the platinum catalyst. And we introduced uh, 10 years ago, almost this zinc motor that swim in the acid in the stomach, still a rocket type, uh, with, but the zinc uh, rocket shape with the polyaniline again, generate hydrogen bubble. So they are powered by the acid in the stomach. Also for the lower GI with the more uh, a neutral uh, media, pH sick, we use a lot of uh, a magnesium based motor, which uh, again, uh, swim in the water and give you also hydrogen uh, bubble. So we're now using Cito fuel to generate the bubble uh, thrust. So the zinc rocket, you can see again uh, with polyaniline outer layer and the zinc inner layer, the basic high school chemistry, the zinc react with the proton in the stomach, give you this hydrogen bubble. And this is a very efficient uh, bubble truss, as you can see in this, uh, picking a cargo, you can see it picked the cargo. So you see the movement and transport using a strong acid. This is now done in pH 1.5 in artificial gastric acid to give you the hydrogen evolution reaction. And more recently, we showed this uh, new design of zinc rocket where we have a multi compartment. Basically, we have the engine, the zinc is a back engine. And then we have on the front, we have a cargo compartment so this is more uh, efficient design because the cargo is on the front pushed by the zinc engine on the back. And we also have a coating, an enteric coating, which is a pH responsive cap that uh, you can protect it in the stomach while passing to the GI. So this is pH responsive, it's stable in the acidic pH in the stomach, protect the cargo. But then it's uh, it's uh, when it's uh, moved down, it's uh, dissolved and releasing the cargo. Now uh, we can also, as I mentioned, use a magnesium rocket, magnesium sphere in the lower GI, especially, but also in the stomach. Uh, magnesium also react with the acid, so we use genus particle with opening of the magnesium, the coated with titanium dioxide or zinc oxide still releasing the hydrogen from this opening. Or we have a rocket which is packed with magnesium particle also to operate in the lower GI. So it's a rocket or genus you'll see today. And again, the goal is to improve the retention, improve the absorption of the uh, payload on the mucosa layer to improve the uh, drug delivery and uh, penetration. Another design is a biconical design, which is now a multifunctionality. Uh, so in this case, we have a multifunction uh, where you have a 
uh, not only the propulsion, the acid propulsion, but also have combinatorial delivery. We pack this uh, motor with two different uh, drug particles, the big one and the small one. And this one also not only have combinatorial delivery and eye loading capacity, also when it swim in the stomach, it break apart and then releasing autonomously the payload. So you see when it uh, uh, falling apart, this biconical break in the middle and then releasing the cargo and eventually it uh, disappear and self destroy. This is a, another goal to have a, a motor that disappear and self destroy after completing his uh, mission. So it's a nice multi function functionality and you can see this SEM, the different uh, payload, the small and drug. It's a huge 80% uh, of the volume is uh, loaded with the with the drug. You can see a top view. Uh, with this capability now we can go to the stomach with the acidic environment or with the magnesium uh, down uh, to the GI tract. And we will start with the stomach, but we overall uh, with collaboration with Professor Lia Feng Zen, we introduce, as I mentioned, this zinc rocket uh, to operate in vivo. We show with gold nanoparticle payload, the improved retention uh, using live uh, mouse. And this got a lot of attention as the first example in live animals. So we show both the efficient swimming, retention in the stomach. And this was the beginning of the journey. And later on, we operate also the magnesium again in the stomach as well as in the uh, GI. So depend on the coating. So we can have uh, both magnesium that operate in both pH, uh, the stomach and the uh, lower GI. The way we prepare this, we uh, take magnesium uh, particle, five, 10 micrometer. We uh, sputter them with titanium dioxide. So when you put it on the glass slide, you only uh, cover most of this. You keep the opening. So the opening, you see the uh, coating, uh, but they always the opening. And then we cover the titanium dioxide with a chitosan layer or uh, RBC layer or PLGA layer, depend on the specific application. We remove it from the glass. We add another pH responsive layer to protect it in the stomach. So you have a combination again, the magnesium engine, the titanium dioxide, chitosan layer, chitosan good for the adhesion on the wall, then the pH responsive enteric. So, when you enter the GI, the enteric coating dissolve, exposing the dissolve here, exposing the magnesium and it propel in the uh, lower GI. So this allow us a variety of uh, in vivo operation. These are four different paper. We show you the initial one, but there, these two are in the stomach where we show in this ungivante paper that not only the it's moving in the stomach, but also it can neutralize the stomach. This is a challenge when you deliver drug, the acidic environment is, uh, can destroy the drug. So this motor also neutralizes the stomach because of this reaction. It's uh, consuming the proton and then you have increased pH. And then we have a pH responsive uh, drug loaded coating. So this pH responsive coating is dissolved releasing the drug. When you reach pH seven, uh, you have this, uh, we'll discuss this dual function. Then another example of the stomach is bacteria infection. We will discuss it. And then in the lower GI, we will show how we can control the location in the upper part, the middle part, the lower, by controlling the thickness of the enteric coating. So we'll describe these three application now. Again, these are the uh, zinc rocket that you can see swim in the uh, stomach and they have the propulsive form that can stick and penetrate the wall of the stomach to improve delivery of the drug. 
as I mentioned, we have this dual function. In this case, the magnesium, both the zinc and magnesium can neutralize because we are depleting the proton. So again, this is this dual function uh, motor that first uh, neutralize the acid in the stomach. And then once the pH reach seven, it's uh, dissolved the pH responsive uh, coating with the drug, releasing the drug. So we have pH a trigger payload release. So it's all done autonomously and we use it to treat the bacteria H. pyroli in the stomach. But again, by neutralizing this, you eliminate the need for proton inhibitor. Normally you take a proton inhibitor, PPI, to block the acid. In our case, the motor is doing the blocking and you don't need this uh, PPI. It's all in one, uh, one step. Uh, so this is a uh, use uh, uh, to attack uh, the, here you can see first of all example of this. Uh, first of all, we adjust the amount of the motor. Uh, this five milligram of the motor is enough to uh, neutralize it in about 10 minutes. So you can see, in a, a 10 minutes, you get pH 7.4 by controlling the amount of the motor. And again, it's eliminate the need to the PPI here. It's 20 minutes, it's releasing, releasing the drug. And you can see this uh, uh, using fluorescence uh, dye, DID as a payload. You can see the improved retention. This is image of the stomach, my stomach collected after this operation compared to the similar particle, which is a, a passive. This is polystyrene with the same loaded the drug uh, dye. But in this case, because of the passive, uh, passive particle compared to the active dynamic magnesium, we see dramatically improved retention of the payload. So this uh, led us to this uh, study of the uh, of the bacteria infection. You can see the operation again, the uh, operation in the stomach. And again, we loaded the uh, antibiotic laromycin CLR on the chitosan layer, or PLGA layer, and then it's uh, moving in the stomach. Uh, again, you can see the preparation of this uh, setup. In this case, we have not only titanium dioxide, we have also the drug is in the PLGA. So these are the steps involved, putting the magnesium, then the ALD deposition of titanium dioxide. Then we cover the drug loaded PLGA particle. The drug is CLR, the antibiotic. Then we put a chitosan, which improve the adhesion to the to the mucosa layer. So you see this multiple function and including the pH responsive uh, re uh, dissolution of the uh, drug layer. But overall, this gives us a dramatic improvement in the therapeutic efficiency for this H. pyroli stomach infection. You can see hopefully the video. Yeah, so this is how they sw swim in the gastric fluid. But overall, this swimming improved the, improving the retention of the drug loaded on the stomach wall to uh, get this greatly improved therapeutic efficiency compared to the different control, including the passive and uh, just the free drug. Uh, then we move down uh, from the stomach to the GI using this magnesium uh, coated uh, rocket. In this case, we have this uh, five micrometer long uh, uh, polymer, uh, polymeric uh, uh, conical shape lawyer, which is packed with this magnesium particle and the drug or the cargo. And we still have an enteric coating. So the coating protect this when it passes to the stomach, it dissolves when you move to the uh, GI, and then it start expose the magnesium and start to swim. And by controlling the thickness of the enteric coating, we control the location in the GI. So if you have a very thin, uh, thin coating, uh, it dissolves immediately. 
in the, only in the upper GI. Then uh, medium thickness, you have a longer time. This is the time to dissolve the enteric coating. So it's still protected. It's only activated in the middle part. And then a thicker one, uh, a thicker coating, it takes more than two hours and then it will uh, actuate it only in the lower part. So you, again, by uh, controlling uh, this, uh, this is done uh, by artificial, this is in vitro experiment where you can see a different time uh, using the different thickness of the coating. Uh, but these are also the in vivo result we did, uh, we collected this. So again, the thin one is mainly in the upper part and the medium is shown in this paper, the mapping in the medium and the thick one more prefer in the uh, lower part. As you can see this video, it's protected in the stomach now, exposed and uh, start to uh, see the bubble propulsion, see the magnesium particle are back. Let's show it again. So it's protected in the stomach and dissolve in the pH and you see the magnesium particle and the hydrogen bubble propulsion. Uh, one of the studies uh, we use is for uh, vaccine delivery. We are very popular, the vaccine, uh, but this was 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, again, the goal is in general, not only COVID-19 vaccine, but all type. Uh, in this case, we use uh, uh, alpha toxin as the antigen and to generate uh, IgA antibodies. So we will show you how we prepare this motor toxoid. But again, the dynamic delivery improve uh, the production of the IgA antibody against the toxin compared to the uh, static particles. So the way we prepare it, we put the toxin, the alpha toxin in the extra layer of RBC layer, a red blood cell membrane. This is red blood cell membrane with my collaborator, Lia Feng Zen. And then we adding the chitosan, the enteric coating uh, to protect it in the stomach, you see. It only start to activate in when the coating dissolve. And then you'll see the immense uh, immunity by a larger generation of the IJ antibodies. So you can see here in red, they improve uh, uh, antitoxin IgA production compared to the control in blue. So dramatic improvement. Also, you can see the movement and the characterization. If you don't have a active particle, you don't see it in the GI. And this is this uh, dye, you see the distribution along the entire GI compared to passive particle. But most important, the improved IgA antibody generation. As I mentioned, one of our goal is uh, to have the motor uh, self-destroy and disappear upon completion their mission. So you finish your mission and you, you want to disappear. It's all biocompatible. Magnesium, zinc are all biocompatible. They dissolve to zinc ion or magnesium ion. Also, the core, these are core shell, almost core shell particle. So also zinc oxide or iron oxide that we use as outer layer are biocompatible and also they are biodegradable. So even the, while the magnesium is dissolved in a five minute, the magnesium uh, core, the outer layer, let's say the zinc oxide dissolve in 12 minutes. You see after 15 minutes, it's almost fully. So the entire motor, both the core and the shell are dissolved within less than 20 minutes, as you can see here, or you can see here. So we can basically can program, we can use the material and the sickness this to control the transient behavior, to have it a fast or slow degradation by controlling the thickness of the zinc oxide, or even we use a silica layer that dissolve longer. Here the silica shell dissolve after one hour almost. But overall in this nice paper, we show initially you see the zinc, the magnesium. After two minutes, uh, this is the core shell. Initially it was, 
fully, and then after two, three minutes, it's nearly uh, disappear in uh, 10 minutes, and then the shell require another one hour to disappear. And again, uh, if you look at uh, what uh, people try, we have last week or two weeks again, we have this virgin, uh, sometimes you want to recycle the motor, reuse the motor like uh, Bezos, he got the capsule, he got the engine come back and the uh, capsule is coming back for reusability. In our case, uh, uh, we, in the future, if it's non-toxic, we can reuse it, uh, we retrieve it, but in this case, they are so inexpensive, they are all self-destroy and there is no issue of uh, toxicity and biocompatibility. Now, the last topic I will uh, talk about is uh, scalability. One of the way we want to scale it is to put it in oral delivery pill because uh, pill uh, are in general the most commonly used in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. So we want to bridge the field of micro robot with the pharma to have uh, it highly scalable. So take a conventional pill, but have uh, 5% or 2% of the motor loaded with the drug or separated from the drug uh, to improve uh, what we talk about, dynamic delivery, improve the retention, improve the bioavailability in the blood. So we are using common uh, standard pharmaceutical preparation using excipient like lactose and maltose as the pill uh, metrics. And we have a few paper with rocket or the first paper was with a magnesium uh, particle. And so in this case, basically we show that uh, it's rapidly dissolved. Let's say in the case of the stomach uh, for the H. pyroli CLR antibiotic. So the motor, uh, the pill dissolved very rapidly in the present of the motor, we have 5% of the uh, content is loaded. The here is we have dye, but in uh, general is loaded with the drug loaded magnesium particle. And this accelerated the dissolution of the peel. And overall, uh, you see the, in this case for the payload, the fluorescent, we have comparison if you have the, a static, this is a pill with a static particle. So we have the same, the, the same payload, the fluorescent payload without movement. You see very little, this is image of the stomach after this operation. Then in the, here we have just the free motor without the pill. And here we have the same amount of motor in the pill. So not only we make it more scalable, also we improve the retention compared to the free motor. Uh, and this is again the passive one. And we show the same also putting zinc rocket in this pill. So it's all making a mold. And you see the rocket when, the, when it's dissolved, it's now, a, you can see the propulsion of the particle disease dissolve very rapidly. Now, more recently we separated in the, this new paper, we separated the drug from the motor and use the motor only as self-steerer. So this allow us to uh, uh, increase the drug loading by separating the two functions. So we use aspirin or levodopa for Parkinson or for cardiac. So in this case where you need a very quick action, like in the case of aspirin for cardiac or for Parkinson, uh, we showed that the self-steering approach in connection with large animal, now we're moving to pigs. We have greatly improved the solution of the pill. Uh, this is the, see if you put this in vitro uh, in a Petri dish, uh, this is the same time you can see how the pill is fully dissolved when you have the self-steering magnesium uh, steerer compared to normal pill with the, the same payload, the dye. And this is, you can see the hydrodynamic using tracer particle that dramatically improve this solution. And this is extremely important for this drug. We are working now on Parkinson patient and animal with Parkinson to show the improved motor function of the Parkinson. But for uh, aspirin, we show 
uh, this profile, especially in the beginning, which is very critical in the case of aspirin for cardiac event, you can see in, uh, even in five minute dramatic improvement, almost uh, four times, these are blood measurement of the pig blood a different time interval after taking the pill. So you can see that even after five minutes, you have the greatly improved uh, aspirin uptake by the blood compared to the static, which improved the action of aspirin. And we are doing some clinical trials for aspirin and levodopa. So this approach, uh, what we call self-steering pill is extremely important. We're moving to large animal. The key is there is no, no limitation on the drug loading. We separate the two functions. The drug is uh, like before uh, 40, 50% of the pill. The motor is only 2%. And this is enough for this dramatic improvement in the, in the pill. Uh, first of all, the pill dissolution is fast. And also after the dissolution and they prove the retention, you see all these vortexes with the hydrodynamic showing with the tracer. So they have two function of the steerer to improve the uh, pill dissolution rate and then to improve the, the delivery of the drug after the pill is dissolved. Uh, so this is uh, going to summarize uh, my talk by talking that uh, we are exciting to work with live animal. We are excited to see other group like Samuel Sanchez or Pierre Fisher or He and uh, Martel and um, Li Zeng and Siti. They are all moving now to a live animal. Uh, Samuel Sanchez now talk about urease based motor in the bladder. Pierre Fisher use magnetic motor in the I uh, had recently, very recently, in the brain and Sylvan Martel, uh, Li, Li Zhang and City work in the blood. So again, uh, we show that over the last decade, we greatly improved the capability of the motor and makes them now extremely attractive for variety of complex operation. Now, all of this requires scalability. We have to address the toxicity. But overall, uh, we made tremendous progress, we and other group, to show the improved uh, drug efficiency, but at the same time, the lack of toxicity, uh, swarming behavior, biodegradability, and moving to a new part of the body. So again, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, we are moving also from the GI to different part of the body. Hopefully, we'll tell you about this next year in London. So we still have a long journey, but we have a lot of fun on our fantastic uh, voyage. So again, this is the group. Uh, uh, this is the old uh, picture five years ago before the pandemic. Uh, we all without mask, but you can recognize some of my students like Wei Gao is now in Caltech. Uh, Jin Jin Li is now Professor Michigan State. Emma Bandutkar is in uh, North Carolina, Fernando in Stanford, Ziggy and Tellin back in China. This is our library. So thank to all my students, postdoc, my collaborator, Lia Feng Zeng, uh, with especially the animal study funding from uh, NSF, uh, Navy, DITRA, Department of Energy. And again, thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Okay. Brilliant. Well, Thank you, Joe. That was an absolutely fascinating talk. Um, I think it's uh, it, it's it's really nice to see a, um, a potential route to translation of this type of technology through the combination of the autonomous nature of how um, these devices could work together with the GI tract. Um, I think that's a, a really great combination. And I'd like to start by um, asking you um, how long it took to come up with this application area in GI tract. Was, was the GI tract the first um, application area you thought of, or has it become the primary route because of the, the slightly clearer route to translation? Exactly. exactly, yes. So it's a good point. And you see, we started the journey in 2005. It took 10 years to go. As I said, but the journey started earlier with the peroxide bank, which is not relevant. 
But uh, we'll focus on the GI again with my collaborator, Lia Feng Zeng, who is expert in drug delivery, because there's the common way for with oral uh, delivery using pills. And as you see, gradually, when we developed the rocket, the rocket was the first step to operate in biological fluid because of the blood, the, the bubble thrust. Mm. But the initial rocket were operating peroxide. Then we moved, developed in 12, 2012 the zinc rocket, which mm. allowed us now, a three year later, to move to the live animal. So we published in JAX the zinc rocket, which uh, operated in the acid. We show it a lot in in vitro, and it took us two years. And then the paper came in 2014, 2015, mm. and then the Again, we're moving a variety. This is uh, just example. We do a variety of uh, application. This example, the bacteria infection and the vaccine delivery, the mm -hmm. mineral delivery like iron for anemia and variety of diseases in the GI going on, colon cancer and so on. So it's a logical, we have a strong medical school in UCD. So we have great collaborators. Good, good question, Ben. Yeah, thanks. So, um I'd like to remind the audience that the, if you want to ask a question, if you could type it into the Q&A box, please. Um, at, at, early on in the talk, you mentioned magnetic guidance, but I think the, the prim, primary um, actuation, it, it's non-guided, right? These, uh, these, the, the rockets are uh, essentially firing um, autonomously. It's the aim then that they just eventually they hit the wall of the, in the case of the stomach, they're going to hit the wall and the, the chitosan is strong enough then to, to bind them to the wall. So it's entirely, that part of it's entirely passive. Is that exactly, correct? yeah. So in, again, in our case, we use this amazing all over, like a firework in the stomach and yeah. it really is thick in there. So the combination of the propulsion thrust and the chitosan mm. improve retention. But again, there are beautiful work from group of Nelson and uh, Fisher City. They're all working on magnetic, helical swimmer. Mm. And these are external. They're a pro and con. Uh, these are more universal. You can apply this uh, uh, artificial uh, uh, bacteria like the helical swimmer uh, for any part of the body, but they need magnetic setup. But there are a lot of advanced in Switzerland, in Germany, mm. or by Fisher or Nelson or City using this helical swimmer. So there is enough room. There are a lot of new propulsion recently, light activated and the acoustic one, and uh, even the chemical and uh, more also hybrid. We also make hybrid of the uh, chemical with magnetic. So like dual uh, propulsion, uh, like you hybrid automobile, you have dual engine, you can swim with the fuel or also actuate magnetically or acoustically. So mm. it's another direction. Yeah, but by using the, the these mechanisms, the the, um, the autonomous um, jet propulsion mechanism and the, the, the varying the thickness of the shell mechanism, you, you neatly sidestep the requirement to actually see what the, um, what the, the devices are doing, right? You're just going yeah, yeah, to let so them go. Yeah, so we tailor, uh, tailor the design and all the layer to specific application. Yeah. So if it's upper GI, stomach, et cetera, and then some other group like Sanchez here, he function like a, a urea because he want to work in the bladder, there's a lot of urea. So you tailor made, but in this case, it's more, uh, more efficient than compared to universal motor like the magnetic, which you can apply, but they're not tailor made to specific application. Mm. Thanks. Um, there's also, um, you know, looking, looking at um, uh, more targeted or more active devices, there's the, the kind of pill cam type devices. I, I know some of those are um, also um, looking or, or capable of delivering drugs locally um, to varying to various points of the GI tract. Um, and that can be done under image guidance. Have you considered um, bypassing the top region of the GI tract, for instance, and having a payload encapsulated in a, in a pill cam type device? Indeed, there's a lot, as you mentioned, and we are working on this for sensing application. This is a different story. Mm. Again, initially it was developed for imaging, you know, colon cancer, but uh, these are much bigger, usually two, three millimeter long capsule. 
and uh, usually they have electronics, so the group in Australia, of course, in uh, Sydney, uh, pioneering work on this. And, and we are working on this uh, the, for tracking metabolites, for sensing application where we have kind of uh, biosensor or biofuel cell to move in the, but they are much larger, but they, as you mentioned, they can also deliver drug. Uh, there are people like in John Hopkins using gripper that can take even biopsy from the wall and if I do even imaging, they're getting more multifunctional uh, capability, like a Swiss, kni Swiss knife where you have all in one, but this are again more complex. So the question, if you want to make it complex all in one, or you target just uh, two function, which is swimming and release or uh, three function, this pH responsive. So you can increase the complexity, but then at the cost of, there is a limit how much you can put on a 10 micrometer uh, robot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I like, I, yeah, a again, I think the area um, that you, you, you're working on is fascinating. It's um, um, producing um, such small devices, passive um, autonomous um, activation within, within the gut compared to the pill cam, which I guess there's also a relatively straightforward approval route to the to the pill cam as well. There's a big area in between where um, there's, I would imagine, a much more complex route to 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 get authorization um, for actually applying these in humans. So I really like your your approach. And with that, I'd like to thank you again for such a fascinating talk. Um, and thank you to our audience members. Um, this this talk will be available um, after 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 we close as well um, online. Um, there's the closing ceremony this Thursday, which is at 3 p.m. UK time. So that's the Hamlin Symposium Award and closing ceremony. Um, and again, thanks very much to Joe and bye bye. Bye bye everyone. See you next time in London.